Hey y'all, welcome back to Crime Time with Mel. Thank you so much for always watching my videos. I appreciate your support more than anything in the world. If you are new to my channel and you've never seen me before, hi and welcome. My name is Mal, Mallory, whatever you want to call me. Um, and welcome. Over here we discuss missing people, try to spread awareness and get the word out there because I don't know if you know this, but I live in Georgia and recently, a few months ago actually, there was 20 something missing children rescued. So these people could very well be out there and they just need our help to spread awareness and bring them home. So that is our main goal over here. And I also throw in some unsolved crimes and solved crimes also. So if that is something you would be interested in, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel and also hit that thumbs up button if you like what you see or if you support my channel. It helps it out as y'all know. It also spreads awareness for these channels. The more people that like it, the more YouTube will pick up the video and spread the word. More people watch. Also, before we get started, I do want to say please do not harass um, or reach out to anybody that I mention in today's video. What your opinions may be, just please keep them to yourself and be kind in the comments. Um, I have spoken with Johnny's mother and I know that you would not want anything bad to be seen about your family member or anything so please just keep it respectful as I know that y'all always do. So like I said I did speak to Johnny's mom briefly. I asked her if she mind um, me sharing the word and making a video about her son and I discussed you know what would be in the video and if she would be okay with that. She said yes, so here we are. I know she would greatly appreciate y'all to spread the word and try to figure out some answers for her son because just the unknown and the grief that this family must be going through, I could not imagine. And my heart goes out to every single one of y'all that know Johnny or that are involved in his life, family, friends. I hope y'all get answers really, really soon. And I hope this video helps spread some awareness about him. So a little description about Johnny. At the time, he was 38 years old, six feet tall to six one, brown hair, green eyes. And at the time, he had a goatee. He uses glasses to read, and he also has two full sleeve tattoos, including an anarchy symbol of an A inside of a circle on one forearm and a pentagram on the other forearm. He also has bones tattooed on the back of his hands and fingers. His left ear is pierced. And at the time, he was wearing a white polo shirt, tan or navy shorts, which those are two di very different colors, so I don't know. Gray Nike or Adidas shoes and a black fisherman's hat. Johnny and his girlfriend Shannon met online. They moved in together pretty fast. The beginning of February of 2018 and they lived in 10 Mile, Tennessee. Johnny would also travel back and forth from Tennessee to Lilbourne, Georgia to visit his brother Brian and on Tuesday, May 29th, 2018, this was one of those times where Johnny was traveling back to Georgia. I do also should have said this in the beginning, but if I mention anything wrong in this video, as always, it's always done by my own research. So if I miss anything, please, please, please leave it down in the comments and I will pin it so that everyone will be able to see it. But on Tuesday, May 29th, 2018, Johnny bought a bike from this guy, a motorcycle, and he was helping him in the garage with it. When they left, the guy and Johnny, it's not said, who this guy was, but when they left the garage, Shannon, Johnny's girlfriend, was standing on the front porch. They said that she allegedly seemed pretty mad about something, and the guy with the motorcycle left the garage around 4.15 p.m. that evening. And around 5.30 p.m. that evening, Johnny's brother sends a text to Johnny asking, where are you at? Johnny responds that Shannon is driving and they are on their way to come see them. 
Johnny's brother Brian responds back to Johnny and says, okay, I'm going to head out to Home Depot, but I should be back by the time y'all get there. Around 6.50 p.m., Brian then texts his wife and lets her know that he is on his way to Home Depot, but Johnny and Shannon are on their way, but he should be back by the time they get there. And also, Brian and Shannon, the girlfriend, are texting back and forth while Brian is in Home Depot, and Shannon says that Johnny is sleeping in the car. Shannon tells Brian that she found a message that Johnny sent a girl and Brian told Shannon don't let him know that don't tell him I'll come get him but just don't let him know that you read his messages and we're going through his phone because he's gonna get mad but he said I'll just come get him. Then Shannon sends a mutual friend Michelle a text message that says, don't worry about dinner. We're not going to be able to make it. Johnny is up to something. And I don't believe he plans to come back to Tennessee with me. By the way, this friend that Michelle that they're talking about lives in Georgia. So Shannon had plans to meet up with Michelle, I guess, in Georgia. And she canceled those pl plans saying that Johnny was up to something. Then a little while later, Brian gets another text message from his brother's phone saying he's sitting in the vehicle wondering if he should run. Brian responds back to his brother and says, if you need to run, you should run. He said he had a very strange feeling about this text message. He just had a bad gut feeling. And that was the last time he ever heard from his brother. Also around 9.43 p.m., Johnny texts his ex-wife. And I believe they have two children together. Again, if I'm wrong, leave it down in the comments below. But he texts his ex-wife, around 9 43 p.m that night saying i love you his ex-wife responds wondering you know what what that was about why did he send that he left it on red and then she never got a reply that was the last thing she ever sent like i know they're not together but you still have love for somebody that you spent years with had children with like you had a life with that person you were married to them um to get that message and then not to even know why like and no answers don't even know where he is like oh my gosh this family i if y'all are watching this like my heart goes out to y'all i really hope and pray y'all pray for this family that they get answers soon because that is torture then 24 hours later on wednesday may 30th around 9 45 to 10 Shannon finally responds to Brian. She said, you were right. He got mad that I was on his phone. We got into an argument. He said he would rather get out and walk than to deal with this. So she pulled over and let him out. She pulled over right off of I-75 going southbound, right past the Cleveland, Tennessee exit. This is a while away from Georgia, even a while away from Lilburn, Georgia. Anyway, she said she pulled off a spot, like I believe either at a rest area or just on the side of the highway off near exit 20. There was Waffle House and you know, there was stuff off of that exit. So he could have gone off that exit, called his brother. I mean, gone to Waffle House, gone to the gas station. And that's what Johnny allegedly told his girlfriend that he was going to get out and walk and he would give somebody a call. Brian asked Shannon, you didn't call me nothing. Like you didn't tell me what was going on. I would have come picked him up. She said, he told me to pull over and let him out. He's a grown man. So I figured I should just better pull over and let him out. Johnny took a green money bag with him and a couple of drones. She dropped him off drove away and never turned around ever again. Now, I do have to say, I have gotten pissed in my younger years and I have gotten out and walked on the side of the road. I'm sure that is not an un uncommon thing, but this just seems really, really, really off to me. And I'm gonna keep going, let's just keep going. Shannon also told Brian that Johnny broke his phone. He was pissed off and he threw it down and it broke. But then later on again, at one point, she said that he didn't break his phone or she didn't know if he broke his phone or not, but she, he took his phone. 
Johnny's family and friends and ex-wife think that that was a lie. They do not believe that Johnny broke his phone. They said he would not do something like that, especially if he is going to be stranded and needing to call somebody for a ride. This exit that I was just talking about that was near where Johnny was dropped off at, it was about a mile and a half away and there is 24 hour things that are open there. The Waffle House, hotels, gas stations, stuff that Johnny could have gotten to to get help, it, even if he did break his phone. Like, Brian drove to these places and he spoke with one of the gas station attendants and asked if they had seen Johnny and everybody said no. Even at the hotel, nobody even checked in under that name. Johnny literally vanished. Now there was this woman in Florida, I guess one of Johnny's friends, um, a woman that Johnny knew in Florida that she did confirm that Johnny tried to contact her on the 28th or the 29th and Johnny asked her if she could come get him and when she said no she couldn't, Johnny hung up the phone. And then sometime on the 31st or late on the 30th, Shannon texted Brian. She said, well, I don't know where he is. I dropped him off and if he's not at your house, then call that girl in Florida that he was talking to. He planned to meet her in a hotel and she was going to come pick him up there. Along Brian's search, Shannon did tell Brian that before Cleveland, Tennessee, they did make a pit stop in Athens, Tennessee, right before Cleveland. And Shannon reportedly had Johnny's phone because Shannon had her son's phone and her son's phone was not working at the moment. And it also would not log on the internet. So she left her phone with her 16 year old son at the time he was 16 and then he gave her his passcode so that she could get in the phone. So basically Johnny gave Shannon Johnny's phone when he had all those incriminating text messages in there. In my experience, when you have somebody cheating on you, they don't just offer you their phone if there's incriminating evidence on it. You feel me? <laughs> also, I don't know if Shannon got her days confused or something, but she posted a picture of her and Johnny on her Facebook that day when they were on the way to Georgia and the caption said, plenty to be happy about. But he was not wearing what she said he was wearing when she dropped him off. So, also, he supposedly texted three people when he was out of the car at this point, after he was dropped off. His ex-wife, a woman in Tennessee, and that girl from Florida. Neither one of those times did he say he was stranded, got into an argument with his girlfriend, needed a ride, nothing. And allegedly, there are multiple stories, different stories being told by his girlfriend. Like, there's not a straight answer that comes from her. And this family just wants to know the truth. That's all. And they deserve to know the truth. Um, they deserve to know what happened to their loved one. It has to eat away at somebody every day if they know that somebody out there is missing and their family and friends are just wanting answers. Like that would drive me crazy. I don't know why this hasn't been talked about more. Have y'all heard about Johnny? Um, have you heard about this? Somebody has to know something. It's got to be eating away at them. And the family and I, I know, beg you, please, if anybody at all has any information that could lead to helping find Johnny and bring him home safe, give the family some answers, please call the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at 931-526-5041. This is just so bizarre to me and I have so many conflicting opinions and I, I just, I really do hope that this family gets answers. Tennessee needs to step it up. I don't know, maybe they, they've got to know more information than what they're telling us. I saw a comment that his ex-wife posted on Facebook and I want to share it. Um, she said something about the family cannot grieve without knowing what happened to their loved one. And any family deserves to have that grieving process and 
you can't have that if you just don't have any answers and that really hit me. If you do know anything, please, please, please call the TBI and give them any information that you may have. And thank you so very much for watching this video. I appreciate each and every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. I cannot ever express to y'all how much y'all mean to me. As y'all know, most of y'all know, I have anxiety and whenever I do these videos, surprisingly enough, it helps my anxiety talking with y'all, helps my anxiety connecting with y'all, and thank you. I appreciate you seriously more than you know. If you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos. I have gotten a couple of comments that YouTube has unsubscribed people. I am not big, so what are y'all doing? I mean, come on, let me keep the little amount of subscribers that I have, please, okay? Give this video a thumbs up to spread awareness for sweet Johnny and his family and spread awareness for my channel. Thank you so very much. I will see you in my next video on Thursday. Bye y'all.